in here fills me with pride and positivity as head teacher of St. Andrews. St. Andrews is a vibrant and creative and strong community that thrives on the relationships that we build with our families and our children and as a team. It's a magical and it's a joyful place. I was lucky enough to be loved, listened to, nurtured by an inspirational leader, Sue East. Sue was also a close friend of mine and we shared an immense passion for educational research, creativity, child development, and a deep-rooted love of learning. Sadly, Sue died last December from cancer, just before the Christmas holidays. We're all researchers at St. Andrews, and the children engage themselves in creative projects all across the city. They have a rich diet of experiences and stimulation that frames their learning. We're passionate as a team to hear their ideas and listen to their voices. One day, we visited Sue in the hospital. And Sue said to us, don't let my illness and my death be wasted. Use it as a gift to learn about death, to learn about life, and take the children, take the families on that journey with you. That was such a hard message to hear at a time of deep personal sadness. I remember walking home thinking, no pressure then. <laughs> it was a real experience for me to feel that sense of vulnerability as a leader. I felt as a leader I needed to be strong, I needed to show that I was in control and I could get through this, I could help the team, I could help the community to get through what we were feeling. However, that vulnerability I was feeling felt like a real weakness. At school, we talk a lot about something which we call the learning pit. It's where, when you're faced with challenges and new things, you have that sense of being out of control. We explain to them this is where the best learning comes from. It's where you start to connect. It's where you start to face the challenges together. It's where you learn to collaborate. You learn to problem solve. And that's where the best learning comes from. It's where you learn to grow. You have to trust that the more effort you put in, the more you try, that the good will come through. You have to trust that that sense of vulnerability, that feeling of being out of control, will lead to good. Sue had a plan, as always. She always had a plan. And I like to think of it as a vision. She had a vision of how things would play out at school. But with that, she trusted that we would deliver those messages, that we would make the right decisions for the children and for the families and for the community. So from the hospice, she wrote a letter. And in the letter, she told the children she was going to die and that she wouldn't be coming back to school. In it, she said, I have loved my time at St. Andrews. It's an amazing school. And you are all amazing children. I never thought I could find so much joy in my work. Thank you for sharing the joy and your friendship with me. We trusted the teachers to decide how they wanted to deliver that message. I offered to do assemblies, but they wanted to deliver the message themselves. They wanted ownership. They wanted to create an intimate time with their classes to be able to share that moment. So at 10 past 9, on the 19th of December, they all sat in their classrooms and they read the letter to the children. I can remember them coming out feeling so proud of themselves that they'd done that and the connection they'd made with the children. Later that morning, we got a call to say that Sue had died. And at 12 o'clock, we served Christmas dinner to 200 children and we had a joyful time in the hall. Later that afternoon, we did the hardest thing I've ever done as a leader and shared the message to the staff that Sue had died. And then a letter went out to parents later that day. The letter 
That letter that Sue wrote was the start of the journey. Sue trusted that we would be able to deliver those messages. I know that because she told me. She told me how much she trusted the team. She told me how much she trusted me and how much she believed in us to keep the school going, to build on all the legacy that she, she started. Community is built through relationships. And the community came together with strength and with, with resilience. The children were fully involved in the preparations for the funeral. Sue had asked for them to do drawings, to put on her coffin, which they did. And they made a thousand flowers, which were given out at the congregation. I led assemblies, and we openly discussed our feelings of sadness, how we felt. And we explained to them how our grief felt for us and took them on that journey with us. We also balanced this with the joy of the time we had with Sue, and we shared our experiences and gave ourselves plenty of time to reflect on that. The learning that came from this couldn't have been planned for, but it came from the strength of the dialogue that we built together as a community and the openness to talk to each other, the openness to trust, and to believe that the decisions that we made were the right decisions. So what learning do we have? What lessons have we learned from it? I've learned as a leader, I've learned to let go of Sue. I've learned to trust in the decisions that I make for, and for the team. She gifted us that. She gifted us that with her bravery and with her guidance. As a community, we've learned to accept support. We've learned to be really honest about those feelings of vulnerability and trusting that by doing that, we can move forward. We've accepted the support and we've moved together as a community. Relationships build the community. For the children and the families, we've learned the power in their voices and we've made sure they've been heard. We've also learned that joy and good comes from the hard times. That letter that Sue wrote to the children hit the national press. And we had the joy of experiencing that trust and support goes beyond the school walls, but echoes across the city and beyond.